Hey guys, what's going on? Wilbro here. Today, we'll be doing some 3D designing. Um, just a second. We'll be doing some 3D designing. And so, as you can see on the screen right here, we've got the katana mag, little, the small one that I've made. I'm going to be doing some modifying to that. Uh, more importantly, I'm going to be trying to make it so that it's more like the worker P mags because they've obviously got the nice little grip to them. Some people like that, some people don't. I'm just going to make another one on top of what I've already made and so that it will make it much nicer and much more user friendly I guess um, but it doesn't have to be this specific mag that you use you can use the longer one which I'm about to like after I've finished designing this off stream I'm gonna use the longer mag design and modify that as well and I'm gonna have both mags and as you may see right here, uh, I'm not sure how good the string quality is coming up, but it is called the cookery mag. I've actually given a name to both the larger mag and the smaller mag. The smaller one is going to be called the cookery mag. The large one is going to be called the Excalibur mag. Now, these are both based off of the sword name, which is in line with the katana mag which is also a sword um cookery mag because i'm australian and australian cookery kind of that makes sense excalibur because it's a legendary sword why not and it's also a really long sword which it makes sense that the longest sword one of the longest swords in the world is a long, ma a really long mag. Um, something else that I'll be trying to do is I might be modifying this if I have enough time at the end. This is the little belt holster thing that I've designed uh, for at least my 25 drum that I use. This is the custom one that I've made with Wilbro on it, which my name. Uh, I might be making a version 3 of these. This is the version 1. I've got version 2 on my Thingiverse down in the description below. Uh, version 3 is going to hopefully be cut down on the sides right here. And it's going to be even thinner than this. And might actually be a slightly less... Uh, not so hard friction fit which is going to be quite nice for some people and it's also that's going to make it actually a fair bit thinner so that you can hold more on your body and they're going to be less of a hassle to carry around when you don't have any mags loaded in them the final piece that i'm planning on doing is this is don't worry about this this is going to be shown off in a later video hopefully but this is my really crappy long shot front gun demolisher hamp barrel attachment um I've actually got a um it's like completely stock in there with a little bit of brass stuff stuffed in there what that will allow me to do is I can just put demolisher rockets in there and put this on a barrel yeah but what if I want to have the option to have this fire stock darts that like multi multiple darts I mean and what if I want to make it so that it can fire different types of darts so mega darts or rival rounds I'm gonna hopefully be making a little piece that goes over the top of the stock one and so that it can fire different types of rounds uh, I've also got a friend that I did a commission for with a demolisher recently and he will probably be able to use these and 
because he doesn't didn't want me to take the stock peg out. He's so he's got completely stock peg. He's all he's done is is I've taken off the grill that stops air flow from flowing in quite nice. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to get straight into the designing now. I'm probably going to put some music over the back. In fact, I've got some already prepared. Um, so yeah, if it will decide to play, there, we can just, just some random music that I've found on YouTube and downloaded. Um, so this is the, just the straight, uh, cookery mag. Uh, this is using the follower and I've actually made it so that the two halves of the, uh, follower are completely symmetrical. So this will hopefully be one piece once it is injection molded, if I end up injection molding this. Um, but I do have it set up in the different parts. So this is the uh, whole, just half, I guess. This is what I'll be mainly doing my editing on. Let's just turn the volume down. There, that should be a bit better. It's a bit distracting, to be honest. <laughs> um, but what, in case you're wondering what program this is, this is SolarWorks, as you can probably see right up there. SolarWorks is one of the, ob objectively, one of the best 3D design programs available. I The only reason I use it is because it comes, like, I get it free from my school. Oh, sorry. Uh, I get it free from my school, which is good enough to actually supply this for their students. And uh, I just think it's a great program. It's all I've really used. So uh, what I'm planning on doing is just making a plane. Uh, at the moment, my computer is running so many things at the same time because I'm live streaming that it's kind of be a little bit unoptimized, I guess you could say. But I'm probably going to make it so that it's 10 mil from the bottom, as you can see by the plane that I've made. So it was originally 10 mil uh, from this way, but then I just hit the little flip offset button. If if you are using SolarWorks, so this is might be a bit of a tutorial or whatever to help you. Um, but this will flip the offset. Mm, sorry, I just knocked my microphone. This will flip the offset. Uh, and just create a brand new plane right there. Um, uh, this will create a brand new plane. Then what I can do from there is do this little thing called a cut extrude, which is, isn't the most, like it's very basic and just follow the little contours of the magazine around the edges. But I don't want to go completely like cutting it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a tiny little line and go from there to there and then go from there to this little intersection point here and go there. Now these lines are far from perfect. Which is why, like, see, that that's meant to be a 90 degree angle, or however much of a degree angle you want it to be. Um, so what I'm going to do is I just go like this, hit the two lines, and because they're not parallel to each other, I can actually just decrease the, or increase the angle. Now, that completely stuffed up everything else, as you can now see. Uh, so what I'm wanting to do is, because I don't want to take out two mils, two millimeters uh, from the entire little piece here. I only want to take out 0 0.1 mils, say, which is not much, but it's a worker PMAG. And, and I'm probably going to do the same right here. And over here. And as you can see, it's perfect, like perfect all the way around. Um, 
and then what I do, exit sketch. And it's taken out a tiny little piece. So let's just make that five mil. And bada bing, bada boom, it's done. Now there's a little bit of a trick that you can use to doing this. Uh, once you've already done one, I you can do something that's called a linear pattern over here. If you hit the linear pattern tool, you can use, uh, oh, it's been a while since I've actually used this. <laughs> um, you can just select the little piece that you want. And as you can see, it has selected a piece and but it's going in the wrong direction so we're wanting it to go in oh. um crap which way um uh it's been a really long time since i've used this but what I'm planning on doing at least is making it so that these pieces come all the way up to around here and it's going to give the same style that the worker PMAG gives. Um, if you would like to like anything else designed around the worker PMAGs, that would be sorry, not the worker PMAGs. Uh, if you would like anything else designed around the extended or the shorter katana mags you can leave it in the live chat i probably will have a look at that and uh actually just leave that in but at the moment i'm just going to leave the linear pattern out and just have that little one piece in uh what i tend to do is because this looks much nicer uh and it will also it won't improve print quality, but it will improve like the look of things. Is put a little tiny little fillet on every single edge that I've done. And for some odd reason, it is failing to do that. Yeah, SolidWorks isn't the best program to use. It's very unoptimized, you could say. But if I just delete a couple of the fillets, you can see... Okay, I can see that it was, in fact, this little fillet here. So if I just go back and refill it these edges... It will work quite nicely and it'll just it'll just look much nicer in my opinion at least you know if, if you decide to do something like if you decide to use SolidWorks or any other 3d design program you don't have to I mean it's it's personal opinion really uh, now that I've done that I should let's actually start on the demolisher hemp attachment I, I'll I'll go off screen and I'll probably update it on my Facebook. You can follow me on my Facebook, link in the description. Most of you probably have come here from that, um, as that's more popular than my YouTube at the moment. But yeah, uh, I'll actually be creating a demolisher attachment now, which I do have my trusty calipers right here. So if I just decide to create a new part, as you can see, completely blank part. Just go front plane, doesn't matter which plane, I just tend to go front plane because that's much easier for me. Extruded base, this is what you have to do just to create a volume. Then get my calipers, uh, zero them at zero. And it's kind of hard because it is in a enclosed piece. I probably could go and get my demolisher peg that I've made as a universal attachment, but I really can't be bothered at the moment. And I'm getting... 
around about 17.8 millimeters as the demolisher peg. So if I just create a 70, if I just create two circles, make the middle one 17.8 and then the outside one just to be like a a nice enough number like I tend to uh, yeah I tend to just do this as a nice round number so let's just put it as 25 hey I can see in the live chat Genji411 is uh, putting some comments uh, category education yeah I didn't really think this was uh, this was sports because I don't think really 3d designing is sports but yeah uh, education uh, yeah I know welcome stream is on at the same time as this but he's not really doing nerf stuff and I mean he's I've been waiting for him to stop for like two hours now and I don't really want to be waiting any longer so yeah um, <laughs> But, uh, actually, 25, that looks quite nice, like a nice thick wall. Let's make this, um, just 15 millimeters long. I can change this at any time that I want. And, as you can see there, that right there, if I decided to print that, should be able to fit onto the demolisher peg, the stock one, or whichever one you want, quite nicely. Um then what I would like to do is this will look really bad at the beginning but I'll trust me it'll look much better once I'm done is just create a round piece with um, little pieces over here let's make a four shot um, demolisher barrel thing and as you can see that looks like absolutely nothing at the moment but what we do is uh, actually wrong dimension uh, actually that is the right thing um, as you can see they're not lined up properly they're 2.89 mil away I can just make that zero make everything zero essentially So that they're all um, in line in a square together, uh, and as you can see, this has come different. But as you can see, they're all in a completely square right now. Now, if I make this, let's say, twenty millimeters away, I do that for everything. Make all of them twenty millimeters away. Then it will be, then it will give them all the same airflow, and make it all quite nice. And as you can see, because I've done all, I've done three of them. That the fourth one should be twenty millimeters. Uh, then what I should do is you probably can't see because my webcam. I'll just move that right down the bottom here. I'm using MMGS. I have to change that to inch, pound, and second because uh, Nerf darts are exactly half inch and then I go right here 0 0.5 and that is the exact dimension of a nerf dart uh, do that for all four of them and because I pr personally prefer to work in millimeters because I am in fact Australian I will just turn that back to MMGS and I'll just move the webcam back over um, then go back to the sketch, re-enter it, and as you can see, that is 60.28 millimeters. If I just take that down to a nice number, 60 per se, or maybe I want to take this down to, um, say 50. Oh no, that's too big. Uh, 55. Okay, that fits. Uh, or Genji411 in the chat again, what are you designing? Uh, if you listened at the beginning of the video, or I'll just tell you now, 
This is, at the moment, a four-shot absolver for stock demolisher barrel pegs. Uh, I'll be making a mega one, hopefully, a rival, or mega slash rival, and maybe a three-shot or a two-shot one. Um, that'll be nice, I guess. Uh, now, nerf darts, I can't remember off the top of my head how long they are, but we should be able to make this long enough for not just regular nerf darts, but also... Actually, I just realized we could make this much, much smaller. I'll do that. Yeah, um, sorry if it seems like I'm a bit ecstat uh, a bit all over the place today. Um, I just really haven't done much live streaming at all, ever. And of course, that involves invalid geometry. Great. Uh, yeah. Just delete all of the twenties because if I do, if I change one, oh, smart dimension up the top here. If I change one, then I have to change all. So let's make that ten. Uh, again, G four one one in the chat again. Shotgun absolver, yeah. So it shoots all four darts at the same time. Uh, let's make this, and see, they're all clumped up in one little ball, which will actually be quite nice and very easy for airflow design. Um, let's take that from 55 mils to, let's say, 30. Oh, that's a little bit too small. Uh, 35 should be big enough, yep. And that is looking actually quite nice, to be honest. Uh, extrude, extrude that out. Um, extrude that out, 70 mils, let me just check how long a nerf dart is. Because I don't have one on hand, oh actually no I do. An AccuFake on hand. An AccuFake is around 71 millimeters, so I was one millimeter off. <laughs> That's pretty good for an estimation, I guess. Uh, let's make that 75 millimeters, just because it'll look nicer. Um, 75 millimeters, yep. And as you can see, it doesn't really look too nice at the back here, and also there is air leak holes right there. What I would do to fix that is put a chamfer on the edge here around this entire, uh, the base of this entire piece, which unfortunately I have to do individual little segments because uh, it sees them as different pieces. Uh, and I can tell you now that that's not 10 millimeters. So, oh, let's go five millimeters. And I guess that, oh uh, wait, I see why that's happening now. Yep. Um, what I will need to do is create a small, small little extruded piece from here because it is filleting the wrong way. And what I should do is I should just create, not 75 millimeters obviously, but like just create a one millimeter little base here. That'll stop the entire airflow from coming out, I guess. Then what I do is I just create that and then it'll look much nicer. Maybe actually a bit of a steeper angle now that I think about that. So instead of 45 degrees, let's try 30 degrees, see how that looks. Oh, that did it the wrong direction, so instead of 30 degrees, let's make it 60 degrees. Uh, 60 degrees. And in my eyes, that looks much better. Um, 
yeah, so that's for either four full length darts, uh, four half length darts, or eight half length darts if you decide to really want a big shotgun. You can with your demolisher. Um, uh, if anyone would like a custom thing designed for them, leave it in the chat. I actually might design it for them in this screen. Or another one, if this stream gets enough of a fee good feedback, I will actually do another one, probably uh, either next week or the week after. Uh, obviously not next Sunday, because I'm organizing, or not obviously, but next Sunday I'm actually organizing a Nerf War at uh, Glenunga High School. If you're actually part of Adelaide or something, come down, it's from 10 till uh, 4, I think, is what I organize it as. Yeah, 10 till 4, just come down, I'll be bringing spare blasters that you can use. Um, yeah, if you're in the Adelaide area, come down and have a look. Uh, but I'll be organizing a war. Hopefully you'll be able to see footage from that soon, or once I've done it, hopefully that Sunday actually. Uh, I've also got a loadout video, which has been highly requested, of my Green Strife. A little bit of an overview of my Green Strife as well. Um, I've got a loadout video hopefully coming out around Wednesday, Thursday. I've, I've edited the whole entire video, I just need to make a thumbnail and make it all look nice and everything. Um, but yeah, next thing I guess we'll make is actually here's a good little tip for those of you who are a bit lazy like me you just uh, save it I'll just make demo hemp four shot absolver Let's, I'll just name it that and then what I can do is I can just go uh, save it like that and then save again, but this time saving as, and make it demo hamp three shot absolver. Uh, roll, roll back on the little side here, and then it'll take me straight back down to the little peg thing that I made here. Now what I can do from there is just using the exact same dimensions because I don't have to redimension then. Uh, create a big hole like that and create three little uh, pegs or holes I guess you could call them actually yeah holes um, but instead of being this far apart like instead of being distance because there's only three of them this time instead of four you have to do a little bit of geometry uh, actually crap I need to get rid of one of them let's just destroy one. If you're wondering what I did, I just used the little trim entities tool here. Um, oh, is there a way that I can actually do angles? It's been ages since I've done much to do with SolidWorks, but let's go... Well, first of all, let's make them one inch. Go sketch. Uh make them 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 uh, go back to MMGS uh, sketch if I can do things properly that uh, I'll make these if I can get it right yeah, so make them, let's say, 15 millimeters. Oh, yeah, 15 millimeters looks nice. Apart. 15 millimeter. And it doesn't really look right. But if I do it like this, 15 millimeter, it's come up in a perfect triangle, if you could call it that. Um, then what I can do from there is do a little 7.5, because that's half of 15 on all three of the balls, 7.5 and then 
7.5 and that stuffed up my geometry completely um, what should I do here actually um, Did it in the wrong spot, I think. If I just do, oh no, nope, nope, that's fine. Seven point five. You know what? Let's just not do the three shot absolver right now. Yeah, this is how 3D designing often goes. You just, you come, you turn into a hitch and you really can't be bothered just doing stuff. Uh, the dimensions of a Megadart or Rival Realm, because I don't have one on hand. Dimensions of Mega Dart Nerf. Okay, a Mega Dart is okay that's actually quite useful they're in uh, metric instead of imperial so let's just create an extruded base go uh, 10 because that's how big a mega dart is because it's two millimeters in complete bottom and then that means it's just 10 is half and now that I think about it, I can just make the outside wall the same as that. And it's 9.5 centimeters long, so that's 95 millimeters long. Oh. So that's that done. That's literally how easy it can be to turn this into... Um, create that. Uh, now what I might end up doing, yeah actually let's do this, is just create a little 12.5 uh, I've actually done this once before I think, which yeah. make a little sketch, put some text in and turn it into mega dart uh, as you can see, the text is the wrong way. Uh, make it rotate. Ah, oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> I don't make it rotate. What I'm going to do is I make it follow the line. It's actually, yeah, let's just make it go this way. <sighs> Megadart and just exit sketch. As you can see, there's just a sketch of Megadart. Then go wrap and make a wrap around this face. And right now, you can see that it is wrapped around that piece. And then, oh, I actually don't want the wrap extruding. I want it to cut. So, yeah, let's deboss. Uh, around here and uh, make it yeah deboss a millimeter that'll do and as you can see Megadart is debossed into the little side of this shell um, then what I can do is save this as demo hemp mega uh, uh, and that should also be able to work for rival rounds because they're about the same size. Um, what's something else? Oh, that's right. I also said I was going to do the little shortened down version of the magazine holder that I have made. Uh, let's just do a single one, a single one, version one, 
open this, rebuild the document, because, yeah. Yep, I've got little no printed hobbies on the side there. What I'm going to do, resave this, save as, uh, single mag holder V3. Saving, yeah. Rebuild and save the document. Now, as you can see, it's pretty bulky and big, like my version one. Uh, I personally like this, but I'm going to make it even slimmer by doing just a few little simple steps. Uh, first of all, what I'm going to do is this little bottom stuff that I've all done, if I can find it. Um, uh, yep. Actually, I'm just going to leave that there. Actually, let's do a bit of experimenting on stream. Because that's always fun. Stream experimenting. Uh, stop and repair. Nope. Uh, continue and ignore. Let's just leave it there. Um, uh, Jay Yang, that's actually Joel from Nerf Printed Hobbies. Uh, what are you working on now? Right now, I'm working on making this my uh, mag holders that are belt mounted much smaller and much slimmer. So what I'm planning on doing is cutting them completely down to the bare minimum. So right down to the belt loops. And that should also be able to just come out. Oh, what is my computer doing? Yep, should be able to come out completely like this and cut away completely like that. Now that looks relatively okay, I guess. Doesn't look really nice with these just jut, these just 90 degree corners. So what I like to do, just go on a little fillet, a uh, fillet tangent, I guess you could call it, <laughs> and just fillet everything. Just makes it look nice, I guess. Um, fillets along here, along here, along here, along here. Uh, let's see how that looks. And of course, it doesn't work because the fillets are probably too big. So let's make it five millimeters, half the size. And have a look at that. It looks much better, to be honest. It actually kind of looks quite nice at the bottom. I actually like how I left the bottom. Um, <laughs> let's just do a little bit of a fillet along these lines because those ones actually might get caught on a fair bit of things. Fair bit of things. Great English there. Uh, let's make some much smaller fillets going one millimeter right here because these are a fairly big snagging point oh. a uh, fairly big snagging point because that's you actually might get cut there oh what's happening here was it two pieces no, it's following the piece anyway and they're nice and curved now um, now you might be wondering what this little square here is um, I actually tried to make it so that they were similar to the foam blast uh, designed ones where they actually had a little uh, attachment nub that fit into this little uh, cut out of all of the magazines that actually make them hook in. Uh, but it actually didn't work because I decided it just didn't look nice and it didn't actually, it wasn't enough. Um, wasn't flexible enough for it to actually go in. So I decided to make it, uh, to just take that out and I'd already designed the whole friction fit aspect 
It actually works really well now. Um, this is the version 3. Uh, let's actually... Let's do this to the double mag as well. Just save this. Uh, open the double mag holder. Uh, double mag holder version 1. Uh, no, don't proceed with feature recognition. Uh, save as double mag holder v3. And then, yep, a really, a really big mag holder, essentially, that can hold two mags. Uh, when I get my 3D printers, or 3D printer up and running again, I'm probably going to be printing a whole bunch of these and actually replacing my existing pouches for my 12s and they're on my side and I've got a, look, a, you, you'll see in my loadout video what I'm talking about um, when that comes out later, but that's going to be, I'm going to be replacing most of my gear with these and I'm probably going to use the version 3's because they're nice and slim cut down look nice um, also potentially um, I might be buying a couple of 3D printers and adding them to my collection well collection by collection I mean just one 3D printer um, at the moment <laughs> and then I actually might be doing some stuff and making an online web store and selling not only these, like the version 1, 2 and 3, um, but also my dart holder belt mounted things and maybe a couple of other things that I'd end up designing, like the demolisher hamp attachments if uh, they end up actually working. And what else could I design? Um, oh, uh, just anything that you guys ask for in the little live chat, I can actually put in. Um, and I'll, if it's a good enough design, I actually might put it up on the web store, if I end up doing that, obviously. Um, a little thing that came up just then is because I've actually done it in two separate pieces right here, um, as you can see, it comes up on, on this one, it's completely fine. If I go five millimeters, it's completely fine on this, on the front mag. Like so, if I, yeah, it's completely fine. But then if I go fill it and do it on the second mag, it fillets this one as well, which is going to create a little bit of... Well, it's going to make it so that it prints a lot, like, weaker. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do that on the... I'm just going to do that on the front one, though, because all you really see is the front one. Um, you may be wondering that this is a bit weak in design. 3D printing depending on what infill settings you use, what material you use, all that sort of stuff. 3D printing is very durable, and those of you that actually use 3D printing will know that it is really durable. Like, I've got this. This is printed in, like, 15% infill, and I have... This has been shot by, like, a 250 FPS long shot, um, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's been shot by... A modded Cyclone Shock, uh, modded by Bradley Phil both of them have been modded by Bradley Phillips actually, um, and they're actually, this is held up to the test of time, it's got like a couple of little scuffs like right there, it's got a couple of scuffs, and it, it isn't the strongest thing, like I can flex it a bit there, but flex being flexible is actually quite a good thing, and these being don't, not having these little supports right here 
is going to make them even more flexible, which is going to make them, A, easier to load mags in. Because at the moment, this isn't the easiest thing to get out. But because it's going to be more flexible, it's going to be kind of bowing out as I take it out. And something that I also plan on doing, maybe, probably not on this stream, but making a katana mag belt holder uh, for um, like versions of these. At the moment, to hold my katana mag, I actually have an adapter, like the one that you get from Jet, and I just put it in there. And it works with the, uh, the adapter as well. It's really tight though, because they are just tight. And I just put the mag in, and then when I want to use it, I just take it out. It is super hard to get out though, because uh, I've only put it in a couple of times, and it kind of shaves away at the side of the mags a little bit. Because as you, you, if you have seen regular mags, they're like that they're like a curve, they're filleted. Rather as this shaves away at the sides and makes it a bit of a sharper edge. It's not sharp or anything, super sharp, but it's shaving away at the sides of them a little bit and making them, like, the, it doesn't affect the performance of the metal, but it takes a while to break them in, essentially. Um, Let's think of other designs that I could do. Uh, I have been asked to do the... Use the tungsten uh, piece that... Uh, oh, what's it called? The tungsten buffer tube. Uh, the tungsten stock thing. And put a, a buffer tube on the back of it. Uh, I could do that. I would probably tend to do that off of live stream. Maybe make a video on it. Um... Yeah, um, what else can I do? Um, but I wouldn't really want to do that in a live stream because it's going to take a bit of work and it, they're both STL files. STL files are kind of hard to work with in SolarWorks and I would tend to use uh, a program I think called uh, Meshy Mixer. Yeah, Meshy, Mesh Mixer, sorry. Uh, which actually both myself and Papo of Nerf Printed Hobbies uh, both used to modify existing STL files and cut them down. And that is actually how I did a fair bit of my, um, if I can get it up, if I can find the file for it. Uh, is how I made my, I think this is it, uh, no, this isn't it, uh, but my Uzi thing that I've made, I've posted on the, my Facebook page, link is in the description, like I said before, um, but I, well, that's how I made the little mag adapter for that. I actually cut down one of the Kronos mag adapters on Thingiverse and made that able to be used with um, the existing pieces, um, like the existing design that I've used for my um, half dart it's not an Uzi, but it's like a, it's more of an MP5 or something like that. Because I'm wanting it to be more of a pistol, but it can also, I've made a proprietary stock system and barrel system as well, which like you, you might like it, you might not. I've made a stock adapter from my proprietary stock system to the Nerf stock system. But what I've also done is, because it's much smaller than the Nerf stock system, I can make smaller style um, stocks. So I've made a UMP stock, which looks quite similar to the actual UMP stock. 
and I've also made uh, an Uzi stock, which is like it's a, basically a stick. If you've seen an Uzi stock, you'll know what I mean. Um, I haven't made too many other stocks. Uh, let's see what else I've made. Uh, I've got to open here. Uh, files, Uzi, uh, STLs, uh, external stocks. Okay, I've made, oh yeah, I've made a pistol one that basically just fits on the back of it, takes away the little lump that the stock adapter is and makes it look more like a pistol thing so that you can just hold it out and shoot and, yeah, I guess. Um... I made a second Uzi stock that's a little bit longer. Um, some people like it, some people won't. I've made two versions. It's really up to you, or depending on which version you like the look of better. Uh, and then I've also made an interesting Magwell stock using the same uh, same design as the ones that I took for the actual blaster itself, the same designs. And I've actually put them into a custom stock specifically for this blaster, so it can hold three katana, sorry, three katana mags on the actual blaster itself. Which, if my longer katana mags actually come to fruition and become uh, injection molded and all that sort of stuff and commercially available, you will be able to hold 90 rounds on your blaster itself. You won't need any gear whatsoever just to hold 90 darts ish because they're going to be about 30 rounds hopefully maybe a bit less maybe a bit more probably not a bit more because that would be ridiculous um but roughly 90 rounds um also i've pulled this up this is my uh kind of a rainbow system is not rainbow at all but it's like um homemade blaster 3d printed it uses 30 millimeter um th sorry 32 millimeter electrical conduit as the plunger tube and this whole thing is basically plunger tube uh the catch system i'll just make some of them transparent uh it might be a real pain to have a look at but I'll show you from this end actually it's quite similar to a night finder or fire strike style catch um, where it's just pushing up against there this whole entire piece is coming down and then this trigger pushes back pushes the catch up and releases the little notch here which is on all night finder or those types of blasters. Uh, I haven't got a little back pin because you can just put like an M3 bolt in there with a couple of nylon spaces or whatever you'd like in there. And the coupler on the end, um, I think I made that 20 millimeters, uh, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, 20 millimeter coupler is what most of us at our wars tend to use. Uh, you'd also need an O-ring for the actual piece there itself, and of uh, and a screw for in there. Uh, the actual grip itself, I've made this a complete screwless design, so you're gonna need to use some glue uh, to put the actual trigger together, uh, like in the actual grip itself, uh, and it won't fall out. Hopefully, I'm probably it. Might, I might be wrong. Uh, in fact, I've got an idea of how I can make it so that it won't fall out. Because now that I'm looking at it, it will fall out. I just need to make this like come down. This little piece come down a little bit under here. Um, but yeah, this is what I've been working on recently. If you would like any suggest, like to do any suggestions on stuff that I would like to, stuff that you would like me to design or uh, anybody else really to design in the future, uh, leave a comment in the live chat right now if you're watching or 
leave a comment down below if this is a video. Um, uh, yeah, I guess that's what you could call it. Uh, thank you guys for watching this first live stream. Um, the link, bunch of links are in the description below. Uh, first of all, my Facebook. Go and like me on Facebook. I'm nearly at a hundred likes, and uh, at a hundred likes, there might be something special coming. There might not be. You'll just have to wait and find out for a hundred people to like my page. Um, subscribe to my channel. You might be subscribed at the moment. I think. Let me just check. At the moment, I have. I think it was yeah, seventeen subscribers. Um, 17, yeah, that's not that much. If you guys can please subscribe, that'd be great. Actually, let's just change it over to this. Yep, bigger screen. Yep, it looks nicer, I guess. Um, next thing, Discord is in the description. Uh, I'll actually switch over to that. At the moment, there's only two people in the Discord channel. Uh, the Pinchy. Yeah, D Pinchy and Youngy Boy. Um, if you could join the Discord channel, you would be. It would be great, and you can. You can collaborate more with me personally, and um, you can talk to me probably in person, and you'll be able to have more of an impact on designs in the future. Um, uh, what's next on it? My Thingiverse page. Thingiverse page, every th pretty much everything that I'll be designing that I won't be ma making commercially available, even stuff that I will be making commercially available, um, that will be on the uh, on the Thingiverse page that I've posted at the moment, I've got uh, I've got my single mag holder. I've got uh, at the moment I've got my single mag holder. I've got uh, version one, single mag holder version two, double version one, double version two, and right after this live stream, I will be making uh, I'll be making the uh, uh, version 3 for both of them up on the Thingiverse page. Um, uh, Jay Yang, uh, Joel, uh, I will be hopefully making the tungsten buffer tube to stock point thing. Um, sorry, I didn't get up to doing that today. I was trying to make this live stream about an hour. It's 57 minutes now. Um, I didn't even... I haven't downloaded the parts for that, and I'll probably be doing it for my next live stream, or maybe even a video of it. Um, after that, I've got a couple of other people in the description. First of all, Bradley Phillips, great bloke. You should go check him out. He's got a relatively big following, especially compared to me. He's got like nearly 2,000 subscribers. Let me just check. Uh, Bradley Phillips. Yeah, he's got. 2,000 subscribers now. He's a pretty good bloke. Uh, he let me do a loadout video of him uh, last, like, as my last video. He let me do a loadout video of him, and he will be, um, hopefully be doing some more loadout videos, or maybe even some more collaborative videos with him later on. Uh, maybe even some live stream talks with him, or or the actual next person, Tiger Foam. Um, he, both of which these people go to uh, my wars and all that sort of stuff. Um, Tiger Foam, I was actually, other than himself, I was his first loadout video way back, like two years ago, using my Jank Raven and this Demolisher Barrel Long Strut Punk Gun Attachment thing. Um, don't worry, my mods have gotten much better since then. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, 
Um, but yeah, hopefully I can do a couple of collaborative things with him. That'd be great. Uh, you can guys can go and nag him on his channel or something like that. <laughs> um, the next things Adelaide Nerf Wars. They're the fate. That's the Facebook group that uh, attend. Like they organize groups, organize wars in Adelaide for the Adelaide community. Uh, I'm one of the organizers for wars. In fact, I'm organizing one next week. I said that back later in the uh, earlier in the stream. Um, but I have organized a fair few wars before, and I would like to obviously like people I've gone to wars they've come back to me and I would like to give back and organize more wars you can find all of the information on any sort of wars in the Facebook page that's where we post events and all that sort of stuff uh, the next is the Adelaide University Nerf Club group that is uh, that's the first the next one is their YouTube they put a lot of like it's not the best quality footage, but it's about the same quality footage as mine. Um, but they put really good videos out. They, like, it's just action-packed, uh, Ray Lesky, as, uh, you guys would know him, actually does a bit of commentary on top of the videos as he's playing. Um, it's, it's good, I, I like it, but it's not for everyone. The next is their Facebook page. They also organize events and all that sort of stuff for their, um, at the Adelaide University, just at there. We often use the Lady Simmons building and the Scott Theater. That's where the footage from the last two videos were actually held. That's where the footage was. And I think it turned out quite well um, yeah, if you guys would like to see any more live streams in the future, give this video a thumbs up, like, like it, comment in the video description saying that you'd like to see more, please subscribe, I really need more subscribers, uh, like my Facebook page, join our Discord channel, and have a look at my Thingiverse page, download the designs, print them yourself if you've got a printer, go to 3D Hubs or... Any, or maybe a friend if they've got a printer print the designs it means a lot to me um, you can Facebook message uh, the Facebook page put them in the comments of the Thingiverse page whatever you'd like to however you'd like to show um, however you'd like to show the actual d prints that you've done it means the world to me to see you guys using my prints uh, because I mean stuff that I'm giving to the community, they're actually using. That just means the world to me. Um, uh, I guess, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in another episode, and take care. Bye-bye.